So it wasn't just about me dressing up and being gay in camp and, you know, dousing myself with glitter and, and putting the heels on. I, I had to kind of find a reason for, for me to want to do Wilma. I vowed to the producers that I would never do any live appearances as Wilma because I wanted the, to differentiate the difference between Patrick the actor and Wilma the character, so I wanted to make it very clear. Obviously that has changed. I think the, the first time I ever did was when we launched season one back at Sydney in Oxford Street and we, I got dressed, I, I, was, I was shitting myself. My mother, um, through the years, I think, have become more, you know, accepting of the idea. There was a, a role um, for the lead, kind of, um, oh, like, the lead, straight acting gay and I don't know why I was kidding myself but yeah I went in for that role and um, and they they obviously enjoyed it um, but obviously not enough and they gave me the script for a scene featuring the drag queen and I was like oh fuck and I thought okay well I'm here I might as well give it a shot so I asked for about two minutes and um, Pretty much just gave my all in that one <laughs> that one little moment um, from what I've observed around um, Sydney at the time and I let let rip and did a pretty good damn audition and uh, they offered it the role of Wilma to me on the spot and um, I just said I'd like a couple of days <laughs> to think about it. My view on drag queens before being cast, um, they fucking terrified me. Um, I don't know, I think in my own, um, my own experience and coming to terms with my sexuality, I think seeing drag queens out on the town, I don't know, I think to be a drag queen or who, whoever um, is a drag queen, have to be so liberated in their own sexuality to, to be available and to do what they do and um, I think that freaked me out a little bit. I was very, you know, um, I mean, they, they come across very, oh god, what's the word, like, um, in your face, you know, so they, they just scared me a little bit and I didn't get it. I was like, well, that, you know, I just, yeah. But I think the personal challenge is, was to be able to be comfortable in my own sexuality, I think, and it's helped me become that little bit more liberated and and confident, I think, within myself. You know, it's not about me just hiding behind her face. You know, I think through hiding, you know, through you know myself for so many years, you know, um, being behind her has given me a different look, outlook as well on the, within the world. You know, I mean, some people would argue that Wilma has become a part of Pat and Pat has become a part of Wilma. I think that's just inevitable.
there's certainly certainly many rhythms and characteristics of, um, of of Patrick goes into becoming Wilma. Um, and you know, I have a bit of fun with her. I mean, I think what I'm learning now is as well that my own political or my own sexual view on, on someone I can use through her. So you know what I mean? It's not, I can like blame it on Wilma. that's going to still take a lot of um, a process and a lot of therapy for me to actually finally admit. And ladies and genitalia, my name is Wilma. Wilma Bumhurst. <laughs> Judging by tonight's talent, I'm hoping it will. What's your name? I said, what's your name? Tokyo. Are going to take me to Tokyo and you want to fuck me? Each time, if I was to do, you know, books for an appearance as well, I, I look at it as being a piece of theatre, I think, especially live. You know, the thing that I'm learning is that it's, um, it's, it is a piece of, yeah, it is a, it is a piece of theatre, and it's, it's not, it's not scripted, so, I mean, I do have an element of control if I know about what's going to go on, but especially when it's being interviewed or, you know, if I'm being interviewed on a chat show or things like that, then that's when I'm like, shit, you know, how would Wilma react? How would, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's all, yeah, it's just heightening the improv skills. Another day, another interview. Fluoro yellow that cheese is. It's the colour of my piss after a couple of rockers. Yeah. Star. She can be a star. <laughs> <laughs> One step here. Beautiful. Do I need to right over next to you? Wilma. Uh, yeah, yeah. How are you? Yeah. Hello, Wilma. Wilma Bumhurst. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to meet you. <laughs> Wilma, you're gonna sit on that hot pink couch over there. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little soapy okay. first. Perfect. And then I'm gonna go to the. This is your single, and, and they will uh, adjust once you're in there, darling. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. All right, here she is. Wilma Bumhurst. Well, welcome to America, darling. I'm so happy to have you here to tell me about the horizon. <sighs> From one studio to the next. I have to get used to this. Hands off. <laughs> Don't touch what you can't afford. Man, I'm wearing a jacket. Cardigan. I'm wearing a fucking mini dress. Los Angeles. What the hell's going on here? And a full face of makeup at 9 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Here we go, the next one. <laughs> Big walk. The more success that happens um, with Wilma and with the, the ideas of the future of Wilma, um, and having signed Wilma to new management and having a team behind me, um, you know, has been very overwhelming, um, you know, because it is going to be a, long, uh, a lot of hard work and uh, Wilma will be in the spotlight a lot more. And 
for me to do that as an actor, I had to give her more purpose. It recently struck with me that it, you know, to give Wilma purpose, I need to identify her as being someone that could potentially be, you know, the face or spokesperson for equality and, and you know, it doesn't matter, you know, gay, straight, bi, trans, whatever. It's about having her as an identity and a character that can promote, you know, safe sex or, or you know, um, stop, you know, youth suicide and things like that. So I, that, that gave me that level of, you know, purpose to be able to know that there is a future within her and it's just not just on the show. Thank you.